This presentation covers the selection and installation of electrostatic precipitators, also known as ESPs. It also covers the installation of ESP UVs. ESP UV is suitable for the control of grease, smoke, and odor in commercial kitchen ventilation systems. It's important that the O&M manual is read and fully understood before attempting the installation. And this presentation covers a no number of points, including how to size the equipment, where the equipment is positioned, the transitions to and from the equipment, as well as, as, well as the transitions from the bend, and access for service and maintenance at a later date. So an ESP is an electronic air filter, which is suitable for the removal of grease and smoke particulate. It consists of a pre-filter, which gets rid of large grease particles, an ionizing section and collector cells. In terms of sizing equipment, the maximum recommended airflow is stated on the product data sheet. But for applications where there is high grease and smoke, especially in sensitive areas, it's recommended to operate the unit at to duty of 80% of the maximum and also consider using multiple pass configurations. Positioning of equipment, ESPs for grease and smoke removal should be located upstream of UV ozone or activated carbon filters, and certainly upstream of the extraction system fan, which is placed at the end of the extraction system. In terms of installation, ESPs require laminate airflow to function correctly. And we can see this diagram on the right hand side. Laminar airflow is, is at the top and turbulent airflow is at the bottom. And it's important to have laminar airflow in order for ESPs to function correctly and efficiently. And this is achieved by locating ESPs at least one meter from bends and ensuring that correct transitions are in place. And ductwork transitions of up to 30 degrees to support laminar airflow are recommended. And air velocity through the unit needs to be two to three meters per second. So transitions must be a maximum of 30 degrees. And this enables the air to spread across the face of the filter. And also it supports laminar airflow. If the transitions are too short, air will not be laminar and will jet stream through the equipment, so losing efficiency. In terms of bends, equipment needs to be a minimum of a thousand millimeters from a bend. If the unit is too close to a bend, the airflow will be turbulent, reducing efficiency. These are some examples of poor installations, and we can see in all of these examples that there is very little transition. There's definitely scope for the air to jet stream through the ESP. And on the third example here on the right side, we can see that the ESP is located close to a bend. There's no transition. There's just a plate which is connected to the ESP. And it's of note that in the case of outdoor installation, the ESP unit is IPX4 rated and so may require a weatherproof housing. Other points to consider. ESP units are to be interlocked with airflow so that they switch off when, uh, when there's no airflow. The ESP unit is to be installed before the extraction fan so the air is pulled through the unit rather than pushed. There must be access for maintenance. And for an ESP alone, then this requires 600 millimeters in order to remove the ESP collector cell 
or if there is an ESP UV, a thousand millimeters is required in order to withdraw the UV lamp frame. It's also recommended to allow 250 millimeter clearance under the ESP for a drain to be fitted. And if two or more units are stacked, a stacking kit is available. This enables the grease and oil collected in the top ESP to drain down and be collected by a drain kit under the bottom of ESP. So in summary, it's very important to read and understand the ONM manual before attempting installation. The equipment must be sized correctly. Equipment must be positioned upstream of any UV ozone, activated carbon filters, and the extraction system fan. Equipment must have suitable transitions and be located at least one meter away from any bends. And there must be suitable access for service and maintenance at a later date. So thank you for listening to this presentation. We hope you find it, found it useful. If you have any questions, please contact us through our website, plasma-cleanair.com. Email us at ask at plasma-cleanair.com or call us on 0800 652 3325.